seating. It is adorned with portraits of the faces of players who have molded lacrosse through the generations of Onondaga from the history to the contemporary players of today's game. The arena also features the Power Play Cafe, which is more than just an arena concession stand. It is geared towards daily specials and can rival any restaurant with its home-cooked specials and has a very diverse selection. And patrons always leave satisfied and full and will often become regulars. And for those sports enthusiasts out there, we have the Price Check Pro Shop located inside the arena. And there is a wide range of lacrosse and hockey equipment which has all of your needs with all sports apparel related to the Onondaga Athletic Clubs with the other Red Hawks teams. They also have helmets, hoodies, traditional wooden sticks, as well as a wide range of native craft displays with a full selection of the favorite Pendleton blankets, as well as beadwork and other jewelry that is made by local Onondaga crafters and has a great selection any time of year that you wish to stop by. And we cordially invite you to come and experience the beautiful surroundings in and around the Onondaga Nations Arena. For a unique historical visit, whether you're here for a day or evening sporting event, to shop at our amazing shop, or just to get some food at the Power Play Cafe. Our staff is eager to serve. Please visit us online at the onondaganationsarena.com. Huge shout out to Firekeepers Restaurant, who is the sponsor of this game. They serve breakfast six days a week and are open every day except for Monday. You can get anything from the big breakfast, meat lover skillet, to a frittata, or the country style scrambler. Guaranteed to have something for everyone in your group. Firekeepers is also open for dinner Tuesday through Friday, where you can get everything from a hot turkey sandwich to a turkey dinner, spaghetti, whatever you want. Guaranteed to have something for everybody in your group. Help support those who support us to make this happen. Leaves it there for Bertrand. Bertrand with the diving jump. Lax and I or Lacrosse Invitational North America is the premier fall invitational tournament in all of north america with teams traveling internationally to come non-stop action get your team registered for there if you've never seen it before we've got the last two years hosted team usa was there last year trying to get ready for the world games coming up huge shout out to scott and east and connor wilson for all they do for blue squatch productions and helping support us as we continue to grow what a drive by blaze it was their contribution that contributed to us being able to afford the wireless mics for this tournament thank you so much again to the lax nye group Tucked away amidst the rolling hills of central New York lies a hidden gem, a place where people gather to celebrate and play games, children, adults, and elders alike. Along the north-south passway, now called Route 81, nine miles south of the city of Syracuse at exit 16 on the lands of the Onondaga, stands a longhouse of history and recreation. Tasha Hode Dakwa translated from the ancient Onondaga language means where they play games and under the roof of this great house the Onondaga Nation Arena serves the surrounding community with a full staff of maintenance security and all other custodial needs to ensure a safe and secure facility they also feature an elders room with seats and tables dedicated to those who may need to watch the game away from the abundant regular seating it is adorned with portraits of the faces of players who have molded lacrosse through the generations of Onondaga from the history to the contemporary players of today's game. The arena also features the Power Play Cafe, which is more than just an arena concession stand. It is geared towards daily specials and can rival any restaurant with its home cooked specials and has a very diverse selection and patrons always leave satisfied and full and will often become regulars and for those sports enthusiasts out there we have the price check pro shop located inside the arena and there is a wide range of lacrosse and hockey equipment which has all of your needs with all sports apparel related to the Onondaga Athletic Clubs with the other Red Hawks teams. They also have helmets, hoodies, traditional wooden sticks, as well as a wide range of native craft displays with a full selection of the favorite Pendleton blankets, as well as 
beadwork and other jewelry that is made by local Onondaga crafters and has a great selection any time of year that you wish to stop by. We cordially invite you to come and experience the beautiful surroundings in and around the Onondaga Nations Arena. For a unique historical visit, whether you're here for a day or evening sporting event, to shop at our amazing shop, or just to get some food at the Power Play Cafe, our staff is eager to serve. Please visit us online at the Onondaga Nations Arena.com. Huge shout out to Firekeepers Restaurant, who is the sponsor of this game. They serve breakfast six days a week and are open every day except for Monday. You can get anything from the big breakfast, meat lover skillet, to a frittata, or the country style scrambler. Guaranteed to have something for everyone in your group. Firekeepers is also open for dinner Tuesday through Friday, where you can get everything from a hot turkey sandwich to a turkey dinner, spaghetti, whatever you want. Guaranteed to have something for everybody in your group. Help support those who support us to make this happen. Leaves it there for Bertrand. Bertrand with a diving jump. Lax and I or Lacrosse Invitational North America is the premier fall invitational tournament in all of north america with teams traveling internationally to come non-stop action get your team registered for there if you've never seen it before we've got the last two years hosted team usa was there last year trying to get ready for the world games coming up huge shout out to scott and east and connor wilson for all they do for blue squatch productions and helping support us as we continue to grow what a drive by blaze it was their contribution that contributed to us being able to afford the wireless mics for this tournament thank you so much again to the lax nye group Tucked away amidst the rolling hills of central New York lies a hidden gem, a place where people gather to celebrate and play games, children, adults, and elders alike. Along the north-south passway, now called Route 81, nine miles south of the city of Syracuse at exit 16 on the lands of the Onondaga, stands a longhouse of history and recreation. Tasha Hilde Dakwa translated from the ancient Onondaga language means where they play games and under the roof of this great house the Onondaga Nation Arena serves the surrounding community with a full staff of maintenance security and all other custodial needs to ensure a safe and secure facility they also feature an elders room with seats and tables dedicated to those who may need to watch the game away from the abundant regular seating it is adorned with portraits of the faces of players who have molded lacrosse through the generations of Onondaga from the history to the contemporary players of today's game. The arena also features the Power Play Cafe, which is more than just an arena concession stand. It is geared towards daily specials and can rival any restaurant with its home cooked specials and has a very diverse selection and patrons always leave satisfied and full and will often become regulars and for those sports enthusiasts out there we have the price check pro shop located inside the arena and there is a wide range of lacrosse and hockey equipment which has all of your needs with all sports apparel related to the Onondaga Athletic Clubs with the other Red Hawks teams. They also have helmets, hoodies, traditional wooden sticks, as well as a wide range of native craft displays with a full selection of the favorite Pendleton blankets, as well as beadwork and other jewelry that is made by local Onondaga crafters and has a great selection any time of year that you wish to stop by. We cordially invite you to come and experience the beautiful surroundings in and around the Onondaga Nations Arena. For a unique historical visit, whether you're here for a day or evening sporting event, to shop at our amazing shop, or just to get some food at the Power Play Cafe, our staff is eager to serve. Please visit us online at the Onondaga Nations Arena.com. Huge shout out to Firekeepers Restaurant, who is the sponsor of this game. They serve breakfast six days a week and are open every day except for Monday. You can get anything from the big breakfast, meat lover skillet, to a frittata or the country style scrambler. Guaranteed to have something for everyone in your group. Firekeepers is also open for dinner Tuesday through Friday, where you can get everything from a hot turkey sandwich to a turkey dinner, spaghetti, whatever you want. Guaranteed to have something for everybody in your group. Help support those who support us to make this happen. Leaves it there for Bertrand. Bertrand with a diving jump. 
Lax and I or Lacrosse Invitational North America is the premier fall invitational tournament in all of North America with teams traveling internationally to come nonstop action. Get your team registered for there. If you've never seen it before, we've got the last two years hosted. Team USA was there last year trying to get ready for the World Games coming up. Huge shout out to Scott and East and Connor Wilson for all they do for Blue Squatch Productions and helping support us as we continue to grow. What a drive by Blaze! It was their contribution that contributed to us being able to afford the wireless mics for this tournament. Thank you so much again to the Lax Nye group. Tucked away amidst the rolling hills of central New York lies a hidden gem, a place where people gather to celebrate and play games, children, adults, and elders alike. Along the north-south passway, now called Route 81, nine miles south of the city of Syracuse at exit 16 on the lands of the Onondaga, stands a longhouse of history and recreation. Tasha Hilde Dakwa translated from the ancient Onondaga language means where they play games and under the roof of this great house the Onondaga Nation Arena serves the surrounding community with a full staff of maintenance security and all other custodial needs to ensure a safe and secure facility they also feature an elders room with seats and tables dedicated to those who may need to watch the game away from the abundant regular seating it is adorned with portraits of the faces of players who have molded lacrosse through the generations of Onondaga from the history to the contemporary players of today's game. The arena also features the Power Play Cafe, which is more than just an arena concession stand. It is geared towards daily specials and can rival any restaurant with its home cooked specials and has a very diverse selection and patrons always leave satisfied and full and will often become regulars and for those sports enthusiasts out there we have the price check pro shop located inside the arena and there is a wide range of lacrosse and hockey equipment which has all of your needs with all sports apparel related to the Onondaga Athletic Clubs with the other Red Hawks teams. They also have helmets, hoodies, traditional wooden sticks, as well as a wide range of native craft displays with a full selection of the favorite Pendleton blankets, as well as beadwork and other jewelry that is made by local Onondaga crafters and has a great selection any time of year that you wish to stop by and we cordially invite you to come and experience the beautiful surroundings in and around the Onondaga Nations Arena for a unique historical visit whether you're here for a day or evening sporting event to shop at our amazing shop or just to get some food at the Power Play Cafe our staff is eager to serve please visit us online at the Onondaga Nations Arena.com. Huge shout out to Firekeepers Restaurant, who is the sponsor of this game. They serve breakfast six days a week and are open every day except for Monday. You can get anything from the big breakfast, meat lover skillet, to a frittata or the country style scrambler. Guaranteed to have something for everyone in your group. Firekeepers is also open for dinner Tuesday through Friday, where you can get everything from a hot turkey sandwich to a turkey dinner, spaghetti. Whatever you want, guaranteed to have something for everybody in your group. Help support those who support us to make this happen. Leaves it there for Bertrand. Bertrand with the diamond. We good on the Black mic up there? Cross Invitational North America is the premier fall invitational tournament in all of North America with teams traveling internationally to come nonstop action. Get your team registered for there. If you've never seen it before, we've got the last two years hosted. Team USA was there last year trying to get ready for the World Games coming up. Huge shout out to Scott and East and Connor Wilson for all they do for Blue Squatch Productions and helping support us as we continue to grow. What a drive by Blaze! It was their contribution that contributed to us being able to afford the wireless mics for this tournament. Thank you so much again to the Lax Nye group. Tuck
Hello, lacrosse friends. Welcome to semifinal number one for the Northeast Invitational, the first annual in 2024. First possession goes to the Oneida Braves, who just won a thriller. Feels like minutes ago over the Onondaga Warriors, they finished first in Pool A. They are playing the second place team from Pool B, the Woodsmen. Oneida with the first possession. Both teams had exciting roads to this point. The Braves, with that, before that 12-11 went over the Onondaga Warriors, beat the Utica Yeti 8-4. The Woodsmen, very close games. A 5-4 loss to CTC Elite and a 6-5 win over the Maine Northmen. They've had a little longer to rest than the Woodsmen have. We'll see how that affects them. Oneida may be the top team in the tournament to this point. I would say Anna, Anna Halley's Doc Stater may have been the best player. That's him getting out on defense. Oh, no, it's not. There's a shot, hard one. Stopped by Blaine Palace, the starting goaltender for the Oneida Braves. At the other end, Nyma Comber. Ball loose along the boards. Big scrum for it. Coming away with it is Maddox Lazor. Lazor ahead to Anna Halley's Doc Stater. And he has been spectacular for this club. I don't have the scoring totals. I haven't seen the, the points in that. But I know, I mean, there's some other. Gage McCoy, or sorry, McCoy Abrams has been great. But Doc Stater, Anna Hallis, may be the best two-way player in the tournament to this point. Lots of tournament to go. As we have two semifinals, this one, and then at 7.45, just went right after CTC Elite, first from Pool B against Pool A, number two, Onondaga Warriors. Comes out to Doc Stater, all alone on the crease. First goal of the game, Dax Brown. 2.15 into the game, puts Oneida up. So no lingering effects early from having played that thriller about an hour ago. Format remains the same as it has been throughout the tournament. Three 15-minute running time periods with three minutes of stop time at the end of the third if the game is within three goals. The winner of this game goes tomorrow's gold medal final at 12.45. The loser will play for bronze just before that. Great catch on the run by Galileo Smith. Doc Stater behind the back, rip there by Connor Zavitz. It goes wide. It's going to be saved from going back over by Anahelis Doc Stater. He's signaling his teammates to get to the bench and change because there's only three left on the shot clock. He'll lob it down into the corner. Woodsman possession. Pass forward by Harry McComber. And this is Angus LeBorn who left the game a couple games ago. In some serious pain with his knee, but sat, rested, got some treatment on it. Watched the team, team play from the bench at the far corner of the stadium arena. And is back, came back partway through last game. In possession violations, so the Woodsman will maintain possession. Up here to Mark Henderson. His shot gets by the far arm of Blaine Palace, but Palace had the angle covered. It goes wide, here's a race down the floor. There's the shot on net by Trenton Thomas on the transition and penalty coming as Jet Lewis is buried from behind. It's gonna be a check, illegal cross check. I think that's a good call. If you say check from behind, it's an automatic four. Here's the break from Trenton Thomas. Stop there. You see, <laughs> That's not a bad penalty to take, as Jet Lewis was naked on the crease. A two on white for a legal cross check. Looking to tuck that one home. So now you take your chances, trying to hold them off for two minutes of running time. And Halley Stock and Halley Stock State are at the top.
Nate Dockstader can't quite get that pass. It was tipped down. He does come up with it, though. Harry McComber on it. Gets it back up to Ann Hallis at the top. Ann Hallis rips one. Delayed penalty coming. Slash. I think United just wanted to get a shot off there, obviously, so they could get the five on three. Har McComber is saying, or sorry, yeah, Har McComber is saying it was right on the on the glove. It's okay. <laughs> His argument falls no, wait. on deaf ears. Left. So he's got a minute 15 and counting on the five on three. Have a good minute plus of the two man advantage. Nate Doxater's gonna stay up at the top. That pass is picked off by Keith Printup. Now can he get clear? Makes the pass out, somebody run onto. Nice job coming up with that one. That shot well wide. That pass is almost picked off. They do come away with it. Damon Darkstater had it. Hidden ball trick, it's at the top. I think they're on it. Still five on three. For another 15 seconds. Backdoor quick stick. Nice pass by Do Anna Hellis Dockstader. Here's one for Damon. He rips it. Another save. Nyma Comber. Keith Printup trying to get through the triple team. It pops out. Oh, what a big save. As that one wound up going to Gardaleo Smith. Now I think we have a penalty coming. Some activity on top of the crease. What a job by Keith Printup working through everybody. It's unsportsmanlike. So Lee Thomas takes two minutes, and that's going to make it five on three again. <clears throat> Just for about, there's 15 seconds right now. And I don't want to get going and have a chance at scoring on this five on three. Blasted, it's wide by Dax Brown. Safety valve does his job there. That's Gabe Edwards. That shot's wide. We're back to a five on four now. Edwards gets it again. He'll step into the play now. Right on the crease, tucked home. Nice finish, Connor Zavitz. Tiptoe in the crease line. Finishes the first goal of the game, eight minutes into this first of three 15 minute running time periods. It's one nothing for Oneida. It's 1-1 one, one, actually, it's the second goal. Do you remember who scored for the Woodsman? Are you sure, Greg, that it's 1-1? One, one? Zavitz on the nice pass from Anahelis Dockstader. Here's another chance for the Oneida. Nice pass out of the crease, Mark Henderson going for a run. Looking to pass, he's gonna pull it down and run again. Six minutes to go, we're back to even strength of course. Henderson gets it, shoots immediately. Nice arm save as he was going to his knees by Blaine Paulus. Thanks everyone for watching. Let us know in the chat where you're watching from. Love to hear where everyone is. Oh, nice shot by Gunya Deer, but it's just off that far post. Blaine Palace is making the woodsman try to be really precise. Henderson behind the back after taking the pass behind the back from Angus LeBourne. Oh, there's a save by Palace, turning aside Gunya Deer's chance. And here come the Braves once again. Uh -huh. 
Nate Dockstader. Watch my print up. Gabe Edwards with the hard rip. He's back to being number 40. He kept the 40 jersey on, but had to put a penny on last game because it was too uh, similar to the opposing Onondaga Warriors. But against the blue, it's fine. He takes a big whack. Or sorry, against the white. And they're both going to go for that little tussle behind the play. Gabe Edwards will go. Oh, okay, to go in McComber. 25, I was thinking it was 26, and that's backup goalie Norm Isaacs, which seemed unlikely. That's the routine, Greg. Greg's finally getting a chance to eat. He's doing yeoman service this weekend. Greg Beecher of Blue Squatch Productions. Power play, Woodsman. Or sorry, four on four. Backdoor pass. Good D to get over there. Here's a shooting opportunity. That one's blocked. Oh my. That did not feel good for Max Nieswander. And he is just heading to the bench. They're going to get somebody out to sub. Woodsman, get it back. My goodness, you could feel that one from up here. Bounce shot gets through. Palace thought he had it, but the outside rip from Lee Thomas somehow sneaks its way in. You see just trickling over, those are painful. For the goalie to, to see go in. Actually, it seems to drop through his legs as he stands up and rolls back. Back to, we're still at four on four. Wait, that penalty is up there, 40. Oh, they've just got the one up to stand for both of them. I get what's going on as we remain four on four. Pass down low, nice shot. Great catch and turning to fire by Nikki Snow, but the save by Blaine Pallas. And Oneida will come up the other way. And Hallis Dock stayed with the outlet pass. Here's Galota Paulus. Langle gets it back to Paulus. Both players released. Gabe Edwards is going to get a defender as that shot was taken. He was rushing in to join the offense. Then hustles over. Jet, Jet Lewis comes out to lead the defensive charge. Here's Mark Henderson. <laughs> I think Jet Lewis may have bought that. Very convincing hidden ball trick from Gunya Deer. Unfortunately, the shot that was eventually taken for the Woodsman was well up and out of play. Doc Stater gets by the double team, comes in, decides the shot. It looked like he had uh, Gabe Edwards on the far side of Edwards was on his offside. There's a goal for Oneida into the final minute. Anna Hallis Dockstater back to the net, sees his teammate there. Uses him as a decoy and just flips that one over the shoulder and into the net for a three to one Oneida lead. Grabbed by Gabe Edwards, he's gonna drive to the net. Oneida really starting to flow together. Early in the season, here we are in early April, mid April. Mid-April. And you can see the rust coming off. You can see the players starting to 
Used to playing with each other again. Diving attempt by Gabe Edwards, but that's the end of the first period. They're racing off and everyone can just stop, take a couple of minutes of a break. We'll take a couple of minutes of a break and we'll be back with you for the Northeast Invitational on Blue Squatch Productions in two minutes. Custodial needs to ensure a safe and secure facility. They also feature an elders room with seats and tables dedicated to those who may need to watch the game away from the abundant regular seating. It is adorned with portraits of the faces of players who have molded lacrosse through the generations of Onondaga from the history to the contemporary players of today's game. The arena also features the Power Play Cafe, which is more than just an arena concession stand. It is geared towards daily specials and can rival any restaurant with its home cooked specials and has a very diverse selection and patrons always leave satisfied and full and will often become regulars and for those sports enthusiasts out there we have the price check pro shop located inside the arena and there is a wide range of lacrosse and hockey equipment which has all of your needs with all sports apparel related to the Onondaga Athletic Clubs with the other Red Hawks teams. They also have helmets, hoodies, traditional wooden sticks, as well as a wide range of native craft displays with a full selection of the favorite Pendleton blankets, as well as beadwork and other jewelry that is made by local Onondaga crafters and has a great selection any time of year that you wish to stop by. We cordially invite you to come and experience the beautiful surroundings in and around the Onondaga Nations Arena. For a unique historical visit, whether you're here for a day or evening,
Braves, Mark Henderson will go pick it up and now Snow is back eligible to be in the play after there's a pick up and a pass. LeBourne behind the back, Henderson, hard rip goes wide. It's gonna be an over and back, but it's gonna turn into a breakaway chance. Nice shot by Dax Brown to sidestep the official off the post. May have got a bit of McComber's shoulder and then hit the iron. And now here the Woodsman come the other way, Conyer Deer. Bounce pass, gets it through to LeBourne. Back door, Kane Kendall, what a save, Blaine Palace. Beautiful no-look pass. 
over in the corner by uh, John Printup made that pass. That's going to be a penalty to Oneida. It'll be a slashing call on the defensive play. And grudgingly admitting that he did it. Go to the box. That's Galladay Palace. Two minutes, blue for slash. So two minutes or less. We're past the midway point of the second of two, 15 minute, second of three, 15 minute periods, running time. Thanks, Nathan Jobson, for chiming in, letting us know there's a bit of an issue with the audio. Sounds like it's okay now. Greg, you gotta do the camera while you're eating your pretend too. Here's a breakout. Gabe Edwards, beautiful goal. Little twister to the far side, sneaks it past Nye McComber. This is beautiful. Here comes the pass, catches this ball right at the dotted line, and on his offside, manages to twist it enough to sneak it inside the far post. That's a beauty. Six to three, shorthanded marker for the Braves. Now, Knight only had three guys out for the faceoff. They sent Matt Martin off, but didn't put anybody on for him. There's a shot, nice step save by Paulus. Gabe Edwards will trot across center. And Oneida going to the penalty kill, leaves it there for Doc Stater. It's Damon. Damon Doc Stater looking for the shot. Couple of checks and is grabbed out of the air by Nyman Comer. He'll just place it in the stick of his defender. Long pass gets it up ahead to LeBourne. Lee Thomas had to be careful there with the Oneida player racing back. 10 seconds left on the power play. Oh, nice move, LeBourne. Another good overhand shot, but that one's turned aside. Maddox Lazor with it. All kinds of pressure, gets through it. The ball pops up, wide open. Henderson has to get up off the turf, throwing up the arm in the save. Oh, nice job by Jet Lewis. to grab that one in the crease before it could spin into the net. Dax Brown will have to track this one down. Or sorry, that is uh, Tony Masano. Dax Brown, the number 22, is the righty. Masano to the lefty, penalty coming to the Woodsman. So the extra attacker out. Oh. Damon Dockstader's shot hit somebody in the leg. We've just gotten back to even strength. There'll be a slashing call going to Tylen Dybo. Two minutes late, slash. So the Braves with a six to three lead. Try to extend that. Nathan Jobson, nice to hear, see that you're out there. Hope you're enjoying the tournament, enjoying the games. Look forward to catching you at a rink soon. Docks here with the pass. Skip pass over to the far side, it's in! No, it's not! Yes, it is, no, it's not! <laughs> the referee is right there, he just kept shaking his head. The Woodsman thought they, or the uh, Braves thought they had one. Paulus takes out off the back, backboard. Anahalise Dockstater lobs it ahead, guessed by both of the Braves, nice work by Cargill, but it is eventually the Woodsman that come up with it. Har McComber, over the shoulder shot, pretty nice one. That one's turned aside by Blaine Palace. Har McComber's gonna go for a change. Ball is loose and it looks like the Braves will come away with it. Big battle along the boards, it's gonna roll out. Snapping down on that one was Blaine Palace. You'll find Dax Brown over along the boards and they got lots of time and space to clear this one out. As the Braves are on the power play. Brown takes it himself. 
swallowed up by Nyman Comber. Long outlet pass and didn't quite connect. Now it is scooped up by the Woodsman. LeBorn lobs it up. Thirteen left on the penalty, just five on the shot clock. So this one will take one. If they can get this loose ball, they'll have a fresh 30. But it's Gabe Edwards coming up with it. Oneida has a lefty coming off the bench, Damon Dockstater. Woodsman do a pretty good job getting them covered. That shot bounces off the leg of Paulus. But four checking pressure gets it back. Gunnaleo Smith got it. That shot turned aside. Some more pressure. We got about two seconds to get over and then we'll lob it ahead. That's a tricky one for Mark Henderson. Short hopped him, but he manages to fight through and get it. Passes back door. Oh, Kane Kettle couldn't catch that one that was aimed at his belly button. And it will be possession for the Braves. Possession violation called and it will go back the other way with the Woodsman. Henderson slowing things down a little. Final 30 seconds of this second period. Hard rip actually hits the Oneida player in the back of the leg. They've got time to get it ahead. Palace will rip one up. Trying to hit his man coming off the bench. It's picked off. Here's a chance. Oh, it's a goal. What a turnaround as Paulus tried to make the long pass. It's scooped up. And thrown forward by the Woodsman. And they get a goal to make it 6-4 through 30 minutes of play. We'll be back after a quick break on this Blue Squatch Productions presentation of the Northeast Invitational. Turkey sandwich to a turkey dinner, spaghetti, whatever you want. Guaranteed to have something for everybody in your group. Help support those who support us to make this happen. Leaves it there for Bertrand. Bertrand with the diving jump. Lax and I or lacrosse invitational North America is the premier fall invitational tournament in all of North America with teams traveling internationally to come non-stop action get your team registered for there if you've never seen it before we've got the last two years hosted Team USA was there last year trying to get ready for the world games coming up huge shout out to Scott Neese and Connor Wilson for all they do for Blue Squatch Productions and helping support us as we continue to grow what a drive by Blaze it was their contribution that contributed to us being able to afford the wireless mics for this tournament thank you so much again to the Lax Nye Tucked away amidst the rolling hills of central New York lies a hidden gem, a place where people gather to celebrate and play games, children, adults, and elders alike. Along the north-south passway, now called Route 81, nine miles south of the city of Syracuse at exit 16 on the lands of the Onondaga stands a longhouse of history and recreation. Tasha Hilde Dakwa, translated from the ancient Onondaga. All right, we are ready to roll with the third period of semifinal number one. Stick with us after this one as CTC Elite and the Onondaga Warriors hook up in what should be a terrific second semifinal. Six to four, huge goal for Gunya Deer just before the buzzer of the second period and the Woodsmen come away with the first possession. Unhighly stock skater, his shot is blocked. Yeah. <laughs> All the fans are yelling too many, and the refs hear them and see that there are six woodsmen on the floor. So they're going to give up the ball, and Oneida will start with it at center floor. Drive to the net. That shot off the foot of the goaltender from 
Galate Palace. Reverse whip, lots of oomph on it, but a little bit wide from Galileo Smith. Woodsman moving towards the net. Nice spin move underneath. Lee Thomas gets a shot off. Stopped by Paulus. Nicky Snow gives it up. Angus LeBourne over on the far side. Can't give him that kind of space, but you can if Blaine Paulus is ready to make that save. Carson Langle couldn't quite get it. Ball still better, and now Kane Kendall will get it, and the Woodsman have another possession. They've got a couple of goals to make up here if they want to get to the championship game. Lee Thomas getting a pick from Henderson. Shoots around it. That's a bit wide. Track down Angus LeBourne. Comes away with it. They've got 12 on the shot clock. Snow. Quick stick attempt. Kane Kendall just misses. He's trying to fight out of the corner. Good D by Diaz Dockstader. We're in 21. Here's Damon Dockstader. <laughs> Hidden ball play was working, but Woodsmen are good now. Anahali Stockstater with the hard rip off the backboards. It's going to be an illegal pick. That's possession is turned over. We're going to have a penalty called to Dockstater. So the Woodsman trailing by two. Get an opportunity here. The illegal cross check to Anahali Stockstater. Two minutes blue, illegal cross check. Mark Henderson will start up at the top. We've got Angus LeBourne and Angus LeBourne Jr. are the, right, the other righties in that strong right set. Skip over to the far side, here's Henderson. Back to LeBourne, thinking about it. Going far shooter. Oh, nice little duck move. Almost getting his own rebound was Gunyard Deer, but he went up stepping in the crease. That's a back in, good heads up four check by Mark Henderson to shove Trenton Thomas into the crease. And with a minute and a half left on the power play, it will continue to be Woodsman possession. Real battle down low between Tylen Dybo and the Braves defender. All kinds of space. Hard rip from Angus LeBourne Jr., but that one stopped. And here come the Braves. Logan Lemmebaum. Gets it up over center, lofts a pass across to the far side once he's out of trouble. Dax Brown goes into PK mode. A little rag time. Late in the 30. Shot by Galate Palace. John Printop over center. Still 32 seconds on this power play. Lots of time. They got to get everybody out there. Now they have them. Lee Smith is the last one. Sorry, Lee Thomas. Shot down low. Nice rip. Nikki Snow. Power play goal. Pulls the Woodsman within one. And now maybe we're starting to see the effects of having that last game of the round robin in the first semifinal on Oneida. This is quite a game. 6-5. Just under 10 to play here in the third period. Oneida gets it. Off the face off through Gabe Edwards. They'll set things up.
shot coming from the outside as one of the woodsmen was toppled into the crease, almost in the line of the ball. It's picked up and a repossession for the Braves and the shot, Carson Langle picks the far bottom corner. That is beautiful. What placement just slips around the defender. Keith Printup tries to get out to him, but Langle takes the shot before he can get there. It's seven to five. River Montour for the Woodsman. Gabe Edwards. And Oneida will get possession. They're up seven to five now with 8-10 to play in the third. Tony Misano wants somebody to come and help. Now he'll set a pick. Chance for Gabe Edwards to drive to the net. Flips it back a bit casually, but is tracked down by Carson Langle. Langle with another shot, that one turned aside by McComber. Mark Henderson looking up the floor, he's just gonna run it because there's nobody ahead to take a pass. Now he's got Tylen Dybo on the far side. Defender closes off that lane, so Lee Thomas has it. Will backpedal up to Henderson. Cycling on the far side to try and open something up. LeBourne fires one, that's off the hand of Blaine Palace, gets up and out of play. It'll be a fresh 30 for the Woodsman. Mark Henderson will start with it as we're past the midway point of the third. That one rolls all the way back. Off to Oneida player, so no over and back, but down to 12 seconds on the shot clock. LeBourne. Spins. Gets a pick, some space, and the hard shot off the arm of Paulus. Picked up by Oneida, and here goes Anahalis Dockstader for the breakaway. Oh, that's an early jump. Woodsman way early off the bench. And would have been a penalty shot had it been called. Got away with one. Brian Dockstader tops, tosses it up, or sorry, Nate Dockstader, 47. I'm making up Doc Staters now. Langle turns around. Back up top to Galileo. Langle hard rip stopped by McComber. Woodsman pushing forward. Six minutes to go. They trail by a couple. Oh, you can't really afford turnovers like that. Just an unforced error throwing the ball away. Here comes Masano. Nate Doc Stater has it. Stepping across that yellow line. He's just gonna let one fly. It was a fairly quiet moment and he thought he'd try and catch them unawares, but McComber was ready. It's the outlet pass to Harder McComber. Gabe Edwards trail check, great strip. Oh. Gabe Edwards can't believe he's getting a penalty. And I think they're saying check from behind. So let's see what it is. Oh, no. So it's a check from behind, that's four minutes. What a huge break for the Woodsman. They can get two power play goals and tie this one up. Don't connect on the back door. That looked like it might've been through the crease. But play continues. Snow gets it across. Hard rip and a goal. Tylen Dybo has been quiet, but there's nothing quiet about that shot. This left, left a contrail. There you go, just space. You gotta give somebody some room when you've only got four trying to cover five. They gave it to Dybo and he made them pay it, seven to six.
One goal game. Carson Langle with a penalty. Oneida getting hit hard. That's an unsportsmanlike call. Get another one. That two minutes. Clark Blue on Sportsmanlike and another two minutes on Sportsmanlike. Okay, so getting things worked out, there's a minute one showing on the Gabe Edwards penalty, a minute 59 showing, so I guess they just got it started. On the second penalty, this one to Carson Langle, there's another one in there, so if there's a third penalty, that might just be a penalty shot. Is it? Yeah. Or are they gonna stack? Oh, they're going to go five on three, a one goal game, and Woods, Woodsman with all kinds of opportunities presented to them. Backdoor quick six on the outside of the net, the backside of the mesh. Scooped up there, and possession again for Gunya Deer. Safety valve up top gets involved as it passes to Mark Henderson. He gives it back to Lee Thomas. Thomas passes down low. LeBorn Jr. stop. I don't know how Lee Stockstater has it very calmly, ducks between the two defenders, used the free arm to kind of work his way through. They wanted a call, there's no way you're getting that after you just got five penalties in a row. And Dockstader tosses that one across to Nate Dockstader. There was definitely a free arm use, but I think that one's gonna go. Eight seconds left in the Edwards penalty. He can't wait to get and join his mates. It'll be interesting to see, did they stack them? If so, then it'll stay five on three. Yep, the penalty to 15. Matt Martin, how did Matt Martin get a penalty? He's not playing, I don't know. That shot stopped by Blaine Powless. Coming to the final two minutes, we are into stop time. Maddox Lazor looks for the outlet. Oh, nice job coming and getting that. Got to Leo Smith, hard rip, but that's right into the belly pad. And then Smith runs into the goaltender and then puts his hands up saying, no, no, I didn't do anything. I was just trying to get back to the bench. Woodsman, a minute 36, still on the five on three for another 10 seconds. Angus LeBourne misses the twister. Woodsman get it back, of course they're gonna get loose balls, they're up five on three. Thomas, back door, oh, a little too quick for Kane Kettle, and the 30 expires. A 30 second kill for the Braves, and we're down to five on four now. For another 50 seconds with a minute 10 to go in the third period. Gabe Edwards takes it. He's gonna run away, they've got 16 seconds left on the shot clock. Lobs a pass across, nice work. We get it there to Galote, Galate Palace. Long shot late in the 30. Woodsman have it, will they use their timeout? They will. One timeout per team, per game. And the Woodsman, that seemed an opportune moment to apply theirs. 
So with 45.5 seconds to go, 25 seconds remaining on the penalty to Matt Martin, who I swear I thought was scratched from this game. He, they, uh, they gave it to the bench. It's like a bench penalty. Bench but penalty, okay. Okay, there you go. Thanks, Greg. Could everyone hear that or yeah. just me? Okay. I never know if you're on the broadcast no, or not. I've got the, I'm screaming into that one. Okay. <laughs> Everyone loving the mic'd up referees. Great work, again, by Greg Beecher and Blue Squatch Productions. So 45.5 seconds, a five on four power play. They don't need to pull the goalie. They'll leave McComber down there. It means you don't have to worry too much about when you're gonna shoot. Anytime you have a look that you like. Angus LeBorn rolls across the top looking for a pass. He'll get it. Back to the far side. Back to our attempt to LeBorn Jr. Doesn't get it. And a Halise Dockstader tried to pick it up and got away from him. But nice job fighting off his man. The ball still rolling around, bouncing around. 20 seconds. We're back to even strength. Shot the save. And a Halise Dockstader gets it. They're going to call time as LeBorn is down on the floor. You can see that left knee wrapped up. And is that a timeout for... Was it for the injury or was it for a timeout by the Braves? If it's a Braves timeout, I don't hate it. Get possession, call the timeout, and take a breath before you have to try and sprint out. Now, Diamond Comber has gone over to the bench for the Woodsman. I mean, it's risky if you leave him out, but what do you have to lose? You're down by one with 13 seconds. I assume, assume he's going to stay on the bench. No, he's actually rolling back. I'd pull him, but... Well, actually, what they're doing is leaving him on and putting six players on the floor. Oh, okay. They actually, Angus LeBorn is just making his way to the bench. Okay, I got it. Here we go. 13.2. Gabe Edwards will start with it. Thought he was going behind the net. He sprints out. Runs into a check. Double check. Ball is knocked loose. Five seconds. Four. It's going to roll free. It's going to be picked up by Cargill. Mark Henderson wants to go. His teammate trying to stop him. If you fight, you're out. Oh, that's a kick in the face. My goodness. Galladay Palace. Oh, and a chop. That is filthy. By Mar Harry McComber as he comes in and chops to the, to the head of Gabe Palace with the wood stick. Nye McComber getting into it. There's a lot going on. Oh, my. Wow. Andrew Najeski, the backup goalie for the Braves getting into it. Now it looks like Jet Lewis and Ed Lewis are gonna go. Nope, Jet Lewis is keeping his helmet on. Let's see the spear. No, the goalie over here is using his stick like it's Yeah. Oh my goodness, Gabe Lewis is not feeling very well. He took a slash to the head with the wooden stick. That will be the end of the tournament for Harry McComber, one would assume. You can't do that. The final score will be seven to six for the Oneida Braves in a thrilling finish, but Nye McComber is squaring off. And Galladay Palace just chucked someone's stick up into the stands. It has erupted here. Some calmer heads prevailing for the Woodsman. Nice to see the one player taking some gear over to the. Yeah. A couple of the woods been going and helping collect gear and hand it back to the the Braves. Wow, that was intense. That really escalated quickly. It did. It just <laughs> took off. 
I mean, it was building, I guess, and then when the final buzzer goes. Oh, yeah, there are a couple of dirty, dirty anger, plays. Man. Oh, yeah. There was okay, we're going to wrap things up because we've got another semifinal to go in how long? 20 minutes. That will Whoa. be CTC Elite and the Onondaga Warriors to see who will face the Oneida Braves in the gold medal game tomorrow. Thanks for being with us. I'm Stephen Stamp for Blue Squatch Productions' presentation of these Northeast Invitational Games. We'll see you shortly. games coming up. Huge shout out to Scott and East and Connor Wilson for all they do for Blue Squatch Productions and helping support us as we continue to grow. What a drive by Blaze. It was their contribution that contributed to us being able to afford the wireless mics for this tournament. Thank you so much again to the Lax Nye group. Tucked away amidst the rolling hills of central New York lies a hidden gem, a place where people gather to celebrate and play games. Children, adults, and elders alike along the north-south passway now called Route 81, nine miles south 